We've all seen and heard how people within the Toho community tend to argue who is the strongest character in the series. Well, I hate to break it to you, but according to Zon, it is Hecatia. But even if she is said to be the overall strongest character, how would the rest of the list look like? Well, this video is made to somewhat answer that question. Thanks for some scrub for suggesting me to make something like this. But this video is not going to just list the characters based on who I think would be the strongest. No, in this video I'll take some interesting characters and give them grades on six different categories. Speed, physical destructive force, magical destructive force, durability, intelligence and influence. The grades are given from 1 to 100. Some characters can also get 100 plus if some category of that character is just so outstanding that it cannot be measured. It would also be worth to notify that the characters will not be listed from strongest to weakest or anything like that. I'll just give them grades on these few certain areas. The reason why I want to make it like this is to make it a bit easier to understand why it is so hard to determine if some character are stronger than the others. And I'd uh, also like to point out that by influence I mean the way the character's words have. For an instance, what kind of an impact it would have for the world of Gensokyo if the character were to say, for an instance, that they'll start the war. Would they be taken seriously or laughed at? That's what I mean by influence. But without any further ado, let us begin. So, we'll start with the one character that I'm sure all of you know should have received a bigger mention in our Toho theory number 3. But since I didn't know about one certain statement while making it, it slipped past me. I'm of course talking about Hekatia the most powerful Toho character to date according to Sun himself. So, speed. There's no official description of her speed, so we have to use a rough estimate. Since she is really powerful, she has to be really fast as well, so I'll give her speed a solid 75. Next is her physical and magical destructive force. For magical, I g I'll give her a really impressive 100, since she is a god and, and as for physical, we don't know for certain what she is capable of, so I'll give her a 90. Next category for Hecatia is durability. She is a god, so she is pretty much immortal by default, but that doesn't mean she couldn't die. That's why she'll receive a 95 from me. Next up is intelligence. As a goddess of hell, she has to be smart. That just has to be so, and that's why I'll give her a careful 100, for I'm not sure if she matches the intelligence of Yukari or Eirin, but I'll still put her up there. And lastly, we have influence. As I've said many times, she is a goddess, so she has some real influence. And since we don't know how vast that influence is, I'll give her 100 plus for influence. When simply looked at influence, she is pretty much unmatched. Next we'll have two characters at once, since they have pretty similar stats. We have Marisa and Reimu. We'll get straight to it and talk about their speed. We know for certain that Marisa is faster than Reimu, so she gets about 55 from me. Not higher, since we have to remember that she is just a human, and human cannot withstand too high velocities. For Reimu, I'll give her speed of uh, probably 22. For the magical and physical destructive forces, it is obvious that Marisa can cause much more damage with her spells than Reimu. Marisa gets 75 from me, and Reimu gets 30 since her charms and spells aren't really meant to cause chaos and instead they are meant to repel only yukai. For their physical capabilities, Marisa will receive a mere 2 from me and Reimu just a little higher of 3. I mean, if they punch you, it'll hurt, but Marisa doesn't really have any martial art training nor any notable muscle mass, so she really can't deal any notable damage. And as for Reimu, 
It is pretty much the same as with Marisa, but she has at least some martial art training, so she would probably hurt more. Next up is their durability. Let me ask you, what do you think would happen if, for an example, Mei Ling were to hit Marisa to her chest with all her force? Well, she would die immediately. Marisa and Raymu are humans, so they cannot withstand any real combat outside the spellcard rules. Because of this, Marisa will receive a pathetic one from me and Raymu rec receives three since she can use some protective charms, but they really don't ha offer that much. Then we have the intelligence of our humans here. This one goes for Marisa Force. She has demonstrated to have a vast knowledge of magical and mathematical subjects. She'll receive 38 from me, which is an impressive score for human. Raymu, on the other hand, will receive a solid 15 from me. She is a pretty average human in Gen Sokyo when it comes to intelligence. Lastly, we have the influence. Marisa, to be honest, she has really no influence at all. She has some only because she has friends in high places. And because of that, her influence is somewhere at 10. Reimu, on the other hand, as a Hakurei Shrine Maiden, has surprisingly big influence. Because of her occupation, she'll receive an impressive 60 from me. Next up, we have other two characters, and I'm quite sure that you all saw these ones coming sooner or later. Flandre and her sister Remelia. Maybe the two most capable powerhouses in Toho Universe. You have to understand that their capabilities in combat are pretty similar to each other because they're both vampires and sisters. As for their speed, they both will receive an impressive 99. They have the speed of a Tengu, but it's still just below the fastest beings in Gensokyo. Next up is their magical destruction power. The only difference here is Flandre's ability, which might just be the most powerful ability when used in combat with pretty much endless destruction capabilities. That's why Flandre receives an absolute maximum of 100 plus and her sister gets a still pretty good score of 97. Physical destruction power for both of them is pretty much identical, since they are the same species with their own magical weapons. Both will get a strong 98 from me. Next up is Durability, which once again will be the same for both of them. As immortal vampires that can be only killed with either wooden stake through their heart or with a silver weapon, they'll receive a really strong 100 from me. Even Sun isn't capable of killing them. While it vaporizes them, they'll still reform after a while. But now we'll get to the part that truly sets the two sisters apart. Intelligence for Remilia and Flandre is pretty hard to determine. Remilia seems to be somewhat knowledgeable when it comes to your average stuff, so she'll get a careful 30 from me. But the true difficulty is Flandre. We've been demonstrated that she is actually pretty smart when it comes to certain topics, such as her sister's ability and other things. For an example, she understands very well what Meteor is. But then there are things she cannot comprehend, such as the concept of dying. If she had knowledge on everyday life subjects, she could have even higher knowledge than her sister. But because of her pretty uneven intelligence, she'll receive an unsure 23-ish from me. But the final category that really sets the two apart is the influence. Remilia is the mistress of the SDM and is pretty powerful being, so one could think her influence in the world around her would be great, but in fact it is not. It is actually a mere 30 at best. She really doesn't get herself involved in the cares of the world, but then there's her sister, who isn't even known by everyone in Gensokyo, and on top of that she is considered to be out of her mind, so her word is pretty much anything else but the law in SDM. She doesn't really have any influence outside the Scarlet Devil Mansion, and even there it is pretty minuscule. So Flandre will get a pathetic 7 from me. Second to last character I'm gonna talk in this video is Junko. 
solely because I feel like Junko is almost always underestimated. Not only was she capable of getting Lunarians on the run, but she also has a friend in really high place. So let's start. For her speed, I have to go with pure assumptions, since nothing has ever been stated. I'm sure she isn't too slow nor too fast, so she'll receive a uh, 45 from me. As for her magical destructive abilities, that's where she shines. Her purification ability has so many uses. She could literally purify your body into minerals, killing you instantly, or purify a portion of the area around you into substances that would blow you up or kill you in some other ways. She can literally control the world around her to her will, plus Zan commented on her ability by saying that her ability can return things to their godly nature, in a sense giving birth to gods. And people say Okina was impressive by being able to create Yukai. Well, Junko is a god able to create new gods, in a sense. This is why she'll receive 100 regarding her magical destructive ability. Just the sheer amount of usages her ability has, plus she is a god, so she has a massive magical powers by default. Next up is her physical destructive ability. Well, given that she is a powerful god, she has some physical capabilities, but nothing too remarkable. Plus, we haven't gotten any concrete confirmation about it. So, she'll receive a fairly good 77 from me. Next, we'll talk about her durability. Uh, this is actually a really interesting section, because even if Jungo is a god, she doesn't need faith to sustain herself which makes her by default more durable than other gods, since usually god ceases to be once they lose all faith given to them. Plus, as a god, Junko is pretty much immortal, but like with Scarlet Sisters, there are ways she can be killed, but currently we have no idea how it can be done, so I give Junko a perfect score of 100 on her durability, just because how hard it is to kill her. Next, we'll talk about her intelligence, and oh boy, she shines on this category too. Fans usually depict Jungo as the most intelligent final boss in the Toho games so far, and they might just be right. She was clever enough to know how one could win Lunarians without any trouble, and her plan would have been flawless if it hasn't been for the heroines of Gensokyo. She also has to be intelligent in order to rival the Lunarians in any way, given that the Lunarians are immensely intelligent on their own and can be compared to Yukari. That's why Junko will receive 95 for her intelligence. And lastly, we'll talk about her influence. Let's just say that her very existence itself is enough to influence the world around her. Her best friend is the goddess of hell and most powerful being in Toho universe so far, who backs her up with an army of fairies that she purifies into pure life force. And on top of that, she is much feared within the lunar capital, so it should be pretty obvious that she is influential character. That's why I rate her influence with 97. The last character we'll talk about is an interesting one, maybe the most interesting human in the whole universe. I'm of course talking about Sakia Isayoi. And the reason why she is so interesting is that when you think about it, she differs a lot from other humans of this game series. We'll start with her speed, and oh boy are people underestimating her on this. She can stop time which allows her to move faster than the light, in pretty much infinite speed. I really shouldn't need to explain this any further, and this is why she is the true fastest character in the whole franchise. Hands down. She'll get an absolute maximum of 100 plus from me. But then there's the fascinating matter of her magical destructive abilities. Honestly, Tell me, when Sakya would be seen using magic to damage her opponent in other than Danmaku battles? That's right, she doesn't. She can use Danmaku, but that's pretty much all she can do with her magical destructive ability. And that's why I'll give her a major 5. But then we hop to the physical destructive abilities of her. And this is where she shines. 
her punches and kicks themselves aren't anything but the weaponry she uses is the key. She uses silver knives that are pretty lethal to humans and surprisingly to many yukai as well. You see, werewolves and vampires aren't only beings weak to silver and stabbing. That together with her combat skills is enough to give her a pretty confident 77. The reason the number isn't any higher is that she cannot deal any collateral damage with her abilities. Next up we have her durability. Even with all her abilities, she's just a human and will break easily if she's caught by a yukai. She has combat training plus she's pretty nimble, so she could probably withstand more beating than Marissa. But Reynus' protective charms are stronger, so Sakya will fall to the middle with the durability of 2. Next we'll move to Sakya's intelligence, and I don't know if this comes as a surprise or not, but she isn't the most clever character. She's actually shown to be quite ignorant when it comes to certain topics, only actually having reliable knowledge regarding her job, her working environment, her master and her subordinates. That's where her intelligence stops. In fact, she'll receive 10 from me, which is even lower than that of Ramus. And lastly, we'll talk about her influence. She has basically no influence whatsoever. Only influence she really has is that over the fairy maids of the Scarlet Devil Mansion. She is usually with her mistress, but doesn't really get to affect what happens around her. This is why her influence is pretty minuscule, 4. But this was the video of me talking through some handpicked characters and how I would grade their abilities on these 6 categories. This kind of a video is interesting to make and I'm hoping that I didn't offend anyone and we could probably have a civilized conversation in the comments where you can tell your opinions about this topic. I would also ask you to tell me if you want this to turn into an actual series. And if you do, remember to tell me what characters you would want me to talk about. But for now, I have to bid you a farewell. My name is Dovey, and we'll see you in the next video.